Welcome to Operation End Times. This is Ben Hellestad, your Jedi Warrior for Jesus. Today is February 19th, 2012. <clears throat> it's a Sunday. And today, I'm just uh, going to take a look at where we are in the tribulation, the final week. Um, basically, I planted a stake, and you know, that stake may have to be pulled up, but for now, it's planted, baby. But that was September 30th, 2011, based on a sign in the constellation Virgo. I kind of put two and two together, and I said, that's the official start of tribulation, the final week, as foretold in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation. So here we are, basically almost six months from that, from that sign, and we're approaching another critical date, the spring equinox, March 22nd, possibility of a huge earthquake hitting. In all likelihood, it's happened the last two years in a row, 9.0s, bigger. The one in Chile, the one in uh, Fukushima, Japan. So, you know, we're only about a month out now from that date, which is also going to start marking the official uh, passing from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. The spring equinox, the fall equinox, and of course the summer and winter solstice. All signs in the heavens pointing to the new age. An age of enlightenment. But before we get to the enlightenment, a lot of tribulation. A lot of personal testing. A lot of things going on. But anyway... We're technically kind of in the first year of that last seven year period. And you know, personally, I don't know if the seven years is actually seven years, you know, because when it comes to time, anything's possible, especially when you get to the end times and to the final day. Does the final day last 24 hours? Does it last 100 years? You know, time has a way of shortening and lengthening. You know, I've, I've experienced it myself. You know, like when you're at the point of death, time slows down. I've been there where I've seen time moving slower than slow. That's why they say you can see your whole life flash before you when you're dying. Because time's going so slow, you got plenty of time to review your life. But anyway, we're kind of in the first year. And, you know, I've talked about it a little bit. You know, signs, the four horsemen. Of the apocalypse definitely seem to be upon us the white horse the conqueror the red horse of war the black horse of famine and pestilence and of course the pale rider death 2012 you know following the last two years 2010 2011 everything's escalating the extreme weather the crop damage the famine the pestilence the death people dying of war 2012 looks to deliver more and on top of it all, you know, we got big events like the Summer Olympics in the UK. Anything can happen. A lot of predictions happening. You know, a lot of people saying there's going to be some divine signs this summer, probably in the August time frame around the, the uh, summer solstice of all things, right? Today, I just want to kind of look because... Uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, where John sees a beast rising from the ocean. Yeah, rising up out of the sea. And then he, eventually, there's a second beast that rises up on land. You know, I think... We're currently witnessing that. It's kind of like an evil empire, sinister forces. And you know, if you're Arab, 
you know, or Islamic, you know, you can't take everything as a personal insult, you know, it's just like me as a Viking, you know, like, back in the day, Vikings went pillaging and raping, and, you know, that really kind of sucks, but that doesn't reflect me right now. So, if you're Arabic or Muslim, and you're peace-loving, then great. You're not a part of what I'm talking about. Because, like, even in the Christian church, if you're out there killing in the name of God, like the Crusades, whatever, I see that as a sinister impact, because killing in the name of God, that is... If you're doing that, man, you're walking a fine line because the Bible clearly says he who kills by the sword will die by the sword. So, you know, who is actually authorized to kill in the name of God? So, anyway, Revelation 13 talks about the two beasts rising. And uh, the first beast, when it rises, uh, it was like a leopard. You know, kind of Persia, that's what to me is a reference to like Persia, Alexander the Great, Iran. But uh, it has like uh, seven heads and ten crowns and, you know, everybody's worshipping it. And it says, who's able to make more war with him? So I'm thinking we're witnessing this, you know, like it's all about the Middle East. And it's that, that empire of Alexander the Great, the Persian Empire, the Syrian Empire, or whatever. But, you know, to me over there in the Middle East, when you look at the Islamic world, the Arab world, it's kind of divided into two buckets, you know, the Sunni, Sh 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 Shiite thing. But the way I kind of look at it is it's, it's like a theocracy-based tyranny, you know, kind of the Muslim Brotherhood or Iran with the Ayatollah where they're demanding strict adherence to Sharia law that like if you disobey God man they will cut you down and they want to technically kill the infidel so they have launched a jihad against uh, anybody that doesn't believe it's the radical side of Islam so you know what if you're not radical if you're a peace loving Muslim then God bless you but you know I'm not gonna deny what I see is that there's sinister forces you know, radical Islamic forces, and they control things, you know, countries. Iran, Muslim Brotherhood taking over Egypt. But it's all based on basically a tyranny of religion where priests or ayatollahs or somebody in a brotherhood is telling you how things are based on this is how God wants it. And if you don't go along with that program, man, you're in deep doo-doo. So the other bucket that everybody seems to fall into is kind of the king's royal family or military control, tyranny by authority, you know. And that was represented by some of the old school cats, Saddam, uh, uh, the guy they just booted out of uh, Egypt, Mubarak, of course, Gaddafi in Libya who got killed, and it's also Assad in Syria. But it's, it's maintaining power through power, you know, because the, the general masses of people, you know, they would rise up against a military dictator or a king because in those systems, the people at the top get everything and everybody else got nobody, got nothing. So unless you, uh, you know, uh, fall in line and support and worship whoever's in power, you're in deep doo-doo too. But they're all Arabic. They're all Muslim. They're all kind of united as... Uh, under this umbrella, but it's two separate power pools, and they're constantly fighting each other. You know? Like, America would make deals with the military leaders like Saddam or Assad or Mubarak or whoever and help them because they would beat back the Al Qaeda terrorist types fighting in the name of God, in the name of Allah, killing somebody, you know, suicide bombers and whatnot. But uh, anyway, going back to Revelations 13, I think that's the, the two uh, the beasts that we see rising. The one from the land, the one from the sea, and the one from the land gets wounded by the sword. And maybe that's what's going to happen, because it, it has a comment where people, as they're looking at the first beast, it says, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And, uh, you know, that might be like, uh, you know, Iran getting a nuclear capability. You know, because at that point, like, they start becoming, you can't make war with them because they got a nuclear bomb. But it says the beast gets wounded by the sword. And we're talking about Israel possibly attacking Iran. Or it could be Assad, because they're talking about the U.S. doing some kind of military action there. 
but both of these two entities, even though they fight each other tooth and nail, they both kind of support each other. And they're the same sinister forces drive both. Because the guys at the top, you know, whether it's the Ayatollah or uh, Assad, they're sinister, man. You know, because they're not looking out for the common good. You know, they're trying to, you know, act as God as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I think definitely Revelations 13, we're seeing that coming into fruition with uh, you know, the possibility of World War III breaking out this spring to this summer. And, uh, you know, an oil embargo and, uh, you know, the jihad coming out of the Middle East. So, got to, want to keep all eyes to what's happening over there. You know, every day we're getting new reports of Israel or Iran doing something, you know, either covertly or, or overtly, you know. And all the other powers in the world are kind of lining up accordingly, you know, whether you're for them or against them. So that's where we are at the end times. You know, to me, everything's still coming together. All the signs, whether it be in the heavens or the actual activities taking place here on earth, you know, we're definitely in the first year, about halfway through, approaching the, the second year. So, we're headed into more tribulation, because by the midpoint of the tribulation, that's when things really start getting gnarly, and that's where you really got to know what you're doing. And the way, that's where the wilderness, once again, is probably going to come into play. All right, this is Ben Halstead, your Jedi Warrior for Jesus, just bringing you a little update on the end times. Revelations 13, the rising of the two beasts, the one from the sea, the one from the land. That's what's happening in the Middle East right now. And you know what? It's all around the world, too. You know, because the chaos, the unrest, the violence, that's the common thread. And, uh, you know, we're in a global society, so even though... We can focus on the Middle East in the bigger picture. It's everywhere, man. It's even here in the United States. So the question could be, whose side are you on? Make sure you're on the side, the right side. Know what your values are. Be a force for good. All right. God bless y'all. Catch you later.